Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be going over some different tools that I use when I'm making gaffs and gimmicks for cards. So, the first thing you'll need is a nice deck. I like to use a deck that has already been broken in. Some people like a brand new deck. I'm not as big of a fan of that. Um, I like a deck that's uh, pretty casual, if that makes sense. Something that I've broken in but something that also looks pretty new. So not something that's uh, that's really, really old. You don't want to use like an old deck that you've performed with a million times because that just looks kind of bad. So you get your deck, and then after you get your deck, um, one of the things that you can do, and it's really simple, is making like a double backer. So you use your glue. You can glue the face of two cards and then they'll stick together. So I like to use Scotch Permanent Glue Stick. It uh, It's worked out very well for me. Um, I like that over the Elmer's or some of the other brands of glue sticks, but if you don't have that, any old glue stick will do. You just want to make sure you apply the layer over the full card to make sure that it'll stick. Some magicians like to use rubber cement. Um, they think it handles a little bit better and provides a a nicer bond between the cards. I'm not as big of a fan of it because you need the ventilation. You need to open a window or go outside in order to be able to use it safely. So I'm not as big of a fan of that. But um, I would also recommend in the glue section to get a super glue, um, something like a Loctite or something Gorilla Glue that will hold something maybe a little bit heavier like a magnet or a coin or a fake bug onto a card and it'll provide a little bit tighter of a seal and then when I'm gluing I like to use a rolling pin to roll out the excess glue from between the layers and then it also helps to provide some pressure to really stick those together if you don't have a rolling pin or you don't like rolling pins for whatever reason you can take an old book. I wouldn't use this book, but uh, any old book, and you put the card in between, and you pro um, you put on uh, something that's pretty heavy, and you let it sit for a couple hours or overnight or whatever, and it'll help to push those two layers together so that it'll stick very, very well. So that's it for the glue. Let's move on to something else. How about the cutting of the cards. So when I cut cards, uh, I like to use an X-Acto knife and a pair of scissors. These work out pretty nicely for me. Um, and then if I'm doing a whole bunch of cards, I'll use a paper cutter um, to cut a whole bunch of cards, but that's only if I'm doing like a full deck. If I'm doing one or two cards, the exacto knife or the scissors work out great. Um, I combine that with a ruler. You use a good old-fashioned ruler to make sure you get some nice straight lines. You can measure everything and get it all exact. And um, I also have this, this little tool. It helps me if I need a 90 degree um, angle. Or if I'm measuring, it helps because I can just put whatever I'm measuring up against this side and it makes it a little bit more exact, a little bit easier. So that's it for cutting the cards. So you can cut cards and then glue a portion of it to another card or whatever you need. Another thing is tape. Tape is, uh, well, they say double-sided tape is a magician's best friend. This is an alternative for glue. Maybe you make a double backer with a couple pieces of double stick tape. Um, it's a great alternative for something that's not as permanent, um, but it still will hold pretty well. And some gaffs and gimmicks, you actually need double stick tape. It won't work with glue. And then just some single sided tape. Maybe you want to tape a card down to your mat while you're working on it. That can help out with that. That's it for the tape. Let's see what else we got. We've got some uh, some thread. So thread is kind of interesting. It's used in a lot of moving gaffs. I'm sorry, moving gimmicks. So gimmicks with moving parts. I've got a couple different kinds of thread here. This is just some normal thread. It doesn't stretch at all. You know, it's sewing thread. 
Um, this is an elastic thread, so uh, a lot of magicians like their elastic because it allows pieces to move. This is a thinner, and this is a little bit thicker, so I use this when you can't see the elastic, and I use this when you can. So when uh, when the card has the elastic visible, but you're not supposed to see it, I use the thinner. When I want a stronger, stronger elastic, I'll use the thick one. And so uh, when I use that elastic, you got to have your needles. So I've got a couple needles. I have an assortment of sizes depending on what I might need. Um, and one of the things when I'm making the holes, I'll take the needle, put it vertically, and then just tap it with a block of wood or something else that's hard so that I get a nice, straight, even hole. So that's it for the thread. Some of the other things is just some uh, something to kind of fix some loose ends. Maybe you want to add an extra pip. You can use a Sharpie. Uh, maybe you want to uh, fix a crease in a card flap like I did in my uh, beginning card flap tutorial. You can uh, check that out if you haven't already. But I just took a Sharpie and filled in the crease. You can also use pens um, to fill in that crease make it less noticeable. I've got a pencil here because sometimes I'll use a pencil when I'm marking where to cut. I'll use a pencil and a ruler. Or there's a nice little gaff that you can use a pencil for. It's called a pencil dot. So you put a little dot on a card or a couple cards on the top corner so that when you spread out the deck you can find those cards, either the card or the group of cards. And uh, you got yourself a nice way of doing that without having to memorize a stack or anything like that. A couple of other things that I have. This is for making blank cards. So I've got a piece of sandpaper and an eraser. Um, there's a bunch of different methods of doing that. I'll probably get into a video later of some of the different methods and what I think is the best way to do it. Um, but you can essentially rub the ink off of a card using sandpaper just going back and forth. Or an eraser you can erase the ink right off of a card if you want to make a blank card or if you want to erase it a pip or something like that these work out nicely for that some other miscellaneous things is just some rubber bands you know an assortment of rubber bands some people like to use rubber bands for their card flaps I I'm not as big of a fan of that I like the thread a little bit better um, but these will help to hold a deck of cards together maybe I had just put a gaff in the middle of this deck I can rubber band it so that um, that will tighten that glue between the two cards but again I'd rather use a roller or a book because I think that works a little bit better but um, the rubber bands work nicely too if you need to make a bend or a crimp in a card you can put a rubber band around it and that uh, that works out so just an assortment of rubber bands never hurt anybody I've got uh, some pieces of plastic this is just kind of a weird little thing to have in my gaff uh, section um, so I use these there's some different gaffs and gimmicks that use plastic in it um, not a whole lot but it's just kind of a miscellaneous thing that uh, that was in my gaff toolbox and I thought I'd share it with you guys you probably won't need that, but uh, maybe if you know what uh, what gaffs or gimmicks I'm talking about, you might go out and get it. One of the last things is a corner rounder. I have a corner rounder, so this is nice. Um, if you saw the short card tutorial, you can check that out. I used a corner rounder to clean up the edge of the short card. It's something that uh, makes a nice, nice round edge. So. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier than trying to use scissors or an exacto knife to get that edge. So that's pretty much it for my gaffing repertoire. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Maybe you want me to get into one of the tools a little bit more and what I use it for. Um, maybe I'll answer it down there. Or if it's uh, if it's a complicated enough issue, I can potentially make another video in the future discussing one of the tools and what I use it for 
and uh, how I make different gaffes. I'll probably get into a gaff making tutorial um, a little bit down the road. I just wanted to show you guys some of the tools that I use and some of the best things um, that I think that you could get if you want to go out and invest in some of those things. So, as always, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I want to thank you guys for joining me. And stick it around on the channel, and we'll see you soon.